This video demonstrates the process of using anonymous pipes for inter-process communication on the Linux operating system. Standard input-output streams are commonly used to accomplish inter-process communication along with pipes. For example, consider two processes and we would like to have some kind of an inter-process communication established between the two processes. We could either do redirection, which involves reading or writing data to files, or we could do piping, which involves sending the data between two processes typically accomplished using anonymous pipes. Pipes enable construction of software system by interconnecting programs or software components together. Anonymous pipes enable this interconnection. The output of one process is connected as the input to another, and internally the operating system uses a finite size buffer to enable the data to flow from one process to another. Thus, anonymous pipes enable creating ad hoc software systems or software pipelines that can be used to solve some more sophisticated problems than what a single command can accomplish. In the bash shell, the pipe character can be used to connect or pipe the output of one process to another. For example, here the output of the ps command is piped as the input to grep command. So in this case, grep searches for the string raudium in the output of the ps command. Similarly, in this example, notice that there are three processes that are connected together to form a software pipeline. In this case, the output of ls command is piped to the tr command, which squeezes out multiple or consecutive blank spaces and replaces it with a single one. And the output of tr command is piped to the cut command to print certain columns of the output from tr. So in this example, three processes are used to construct a software pipeline. Similar strategies can be used to connect different programs to construct ad hoc software pipelines. Although the bash shell can accomplish a lot of convenient piping, still programming with pipes is important in several cases. First, they enable you to create custom software pipelines. For example, you can create pipelines which have cycles in them where some of the data is filtered out. You can also create pipes which have splits or joins where the data has to flow differently between the different processes. So being able to program with pipes enables you to set up these sophisticated uh, pipelines with different kinds of structures in them. And also the pipelines enable you to include additional data processing to process data in unique formats. So for example, you can use pipes to hijack the input and send the data over a network or store the data into databases. For some operations, custom commands can be installed and used, but keep in mind that someone has to code these custom commands first and you as the programmer would be the one who would be coding these custom commands that can be used to construct more sophisticated software pipelines. Let's see how to work with ordinary pipes. Ordinary anonymous pipes are the most frequently used constructs in operating systems. The pipe is created through a system call called pipe, which returns two integers, which are also known as file descriptors. The file descriptor is an internal concept of the operating system, and the operating system essentially returns an integer that denotes these file descriptors. The first entry in the array FD, is, which is the parameter to the pipe system call, is filled in with the read end of the pipe, and the second file descriptor contains the write end of the pipe. Next, the fork and exec system calls can be used to create a child process and run different programs. Keep in mind these file descriptors will be preserved across fork and exec, so this permits the child processes to use pipes to communicate between the parent and child or between two children of the parent. 
The file descriptors are similar to standard input and standard output streams, so this permits the use of dupe2 system call to duplicate or tie input-output streams with pipes, thereby enabling redirection or piping of standard input and output from different processes from one process to another. Now let's see how simple pipes or anonymous pipes are used in a program. Let's start tracing the program just before the pipe system call is made. In this case, notice that the file descriptor is an integer, an array of integer of two, so that you can re receive the read and write file descriptors for the pipe. So when the pipe system call is made, the operating system internally creates a pipe, which is essentially an internal buffer in the operating system. A buffer is a finite sized array. And conceptually, it has a write end and a read end that are represented by file descriptors. These file descriptors are passed back into in the FD array for the program to use. So FD of one will be the write end, so you can write data to it. FD of zero is the read end of the pipe, so data can be read from that file descriptor. Keep in mind these file descriptors are essentially synonymous to streams or files that we use in conventional programs. So FD of zero has the read file descriptor, while FD of one has the write file descriptor. In the next step, the program calls the fork system call, thereby duplicating itself or making an identical child process. Keep in mind, since the child is identical, it will also have the same file descriptors associated with a pipe. So both the parent and child now have information about the pipe that the parent created. In the, and keep in mind, these file descriptors are identical and present on both processes. In the next step, the parent and child can do slightly different operations uh, keep in mind, as part of the fork system call, the parent will have the actual PID of the child process, but in the child, the PID will be zero. So in this case, the processes end up doing slightly different steps where the child calls a child method to do some processing for the child, and the parent calls a parent method to do some processing associated with the parent process. So let's look at a little deeper into these two methods. Notice that the parent and child process are run on the two different processes that were created, and the pipe file descriptors are passed in as the uh, parameters to these methods. First, these two processes typically close the ends of the pipe that they're not going to use. So the parent is going to close the read end of the pipe because it's only going to write data, and the child is going to close the write end of the pipe because it's only going to read data from the parent. In the next step, we wrap the file descriptors, which are essentially integers, into an input-output stream to ease reading and writing data. So this basically takes an integer from the operating system and converts it to an I stream or an O stream so that we can use our convenient paradigm of reading and writing data between the parent and child. The next set of loops, the parent sends data to the child, the, re, the child reads data from the parent and prints it on screen, so the pipes enable the data to naturally flow from the parent to child. Once the data is done, the parent and child methods return call back to the main. Um, the child process continues to finish while the main process waits for the child process to complete. Once the child process is done, the main's wait pit will expire and the main process will also complete and the pipes and the program will be cleared out by the operating system. Now that we know how to use the basic anonymous pipes, let's look at how we can use pipes to redirect input and output our two different programs. Linux provides a dupe2 system call that can be used to connect or tie two streams with pipes. Dupe2 can be used to type pipes to standard input-output streams, which is basically what C and C out is. It's a standard input-output stream. And of course, this can also be used to pipe output of one process to the input of another by appropriately connecting them. So for example, let's say parent zero, the parent process, wants to create and establish pipes between two child processes. First, the parent will create a pipe, 
so that every child process it forks can now have information about the pipe it was created. Then the parent will fork to create the first child process, and then it'll use the fork system call again to create the second child process. Each one of those child processes will appropriately use the pipe. The process one will use dupe2 to duplicate what is known as the output to the right end of the pipe. Then process two will use dupe2 to tie the end of the pipe to C in. So essentially you're taking C out and wiring it to one end of the pipe and you're taking the other end of the pipe and tying it to C in. And once this is set up, processes can send data from one to another. And once all the processes are done, these child processes will uh, finish. Note that once the pipes are set up, the exec system call can be used to run a different program in either one of those two processes, thereby enabling two different programs to communicate with each other using pipes. Now let's see how this is actually accomplished in a program. Let's assume that you have a parent process that's one that wants to accomplish this step. First, it creates a pipe by calling the pipe system call and gets the file descriptors. Next, the parent process will fork to create a child process. Then the child process will close the unused end of the pipe. In this case, it's closing the read end of the pipe. And then it uses dupe2 system call to tie its standard output to the right end of the pipe so that when the output is written, it can be written to the end of the pipe. And then the child process runs ps-fe to run the ps command. Meanwhile, the parent runs fork again to create a second child process and in the child process, it closes the right end of the pipe because it's not using any, it's not going to write any data. Then it uses dupe2 to tie the read end of the pipe to the standard input so the child2 can actually read data from the pipe. And then it runs the exec uh, system call to run the grep command. Then the parent process starts to wait while the child processes start exchanging data between them. Once the children are done, the parent process first waits for the first child to complete. Once it is done, it closes the read end of the pipe so that the second process will also finish. Once the second process finishes, the last wait pad will expire and the parent process will complete. And this is how anonymous pipes are used uh, in Linux to take the output of any arbitrary program and tie it or give it as an input to another arbitrary program. Let's do a recap with pipes. Programming with pipes is important to create custom software pipelines. Uh, these are going to be sophisticated pipelines that you typically will not be able to create via the shell. And of course, setting up a sophisticated pipeline, so creating your own pipes, enables processing data in unique formats. You could send the data over a network for storing into databases, or you could do some custom operations with these uh, uh, anonymous pipes. Um, in this presentation, we used a few key system calls, namely we used pipe to create or obtain two file descriptors for the read and write end of a pipe. Of course, we use fork and exec to create child processes and run other programs. And we use the dupe2 system call to tie or connect standard input output streams to pipes appropriately.